Well, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, so you gave the title. So it's about shiny providing shiny user feedback with the package data which are authored. Um, so I have a quick line on what it is exactly. So the idea is to programmatically show a loading screen to uh, the user of your application, generally with a little spinner like you can see down there at the bottom of the slide. But before I get into the nitty gritty of things, um, let me go through why I think you should bother. Because generally people will tell me it's just aesthetics, it doesn't matter. Uh, so to do so, I have an example um, that I borrow from Rory Sutherland, the ad guy, stroke behavioral scientist from uh, Ogilvy, who has a great observation in his um, alchemy book, which I can only recommend. Uh, his observation is of the London tube, where the single thing that improved passenger satisfaction the most is not faster and more frequent trains, but rather dot display matrices on the platform. Because, he explains, um, we'd actually quite happily wait nine minutes for a train, knowing it's coming in nine minutes, whereas you dread waiting four minutes in a state of complete uncertainty. You're standing on the platform, you don't know where the train is, where it is, where it's delayed or you missed it. Um, and in a sense, I hope that waiter can be sort of the dot display matrix of your app. If the app is loading, let the user know. If the app is reprocessing some data, let the user know. When you keep the user in the know, you induce patience. Um, so in a sense, it's, it's not just aesthetics. Um, it serves a purpose. And just a quick tangent on that. This is a print screen from uh, William Chase presentation at our studio conf, conf uh, 2020 uh, on ggplot2 essentially. And this is something that for some reason we've come to understand when it comes to charts, where um, we now pretty much recognize that a chart with better aesthetics is not just a better looking plot, but it's a plot that does a better job at communicating whatever insights. Uh, and I think the same is true of your shiny applications. But there are also deeper implications going back to this example of the London Underground. Um, to make the trains run faster and more frequently is extremely expensive. Uh, you need new tracks, new carriages, training people, everything could cost a bajillion pounds. Um, However, relative to which a little screen on the platform is quite cheap. And it can be the same for your shiny apps. Making the, your shiny app run faster is extremely difficult. Whereas showing a loading screen, as I hope I'll show you with the way the package is relatively easy. But I really want to stress that point because I think it's regardless of your level of expertise with R or shiny, um, making your app run faster is extremely difficult um, because the code that runs your app is the code that you can write um, and making it run faster generally means um, um, well writing better code and that doesn't happen overnight um, but of course so in a, so in a sense way that doesn't make your app run faster but i hope that it makes it feel run faster i have the next slide to try and show you this um, let me refresh here, that tends to do the trick, um, because in a sense it's a false dichotomy, it's not one or the other, by, by any means try and make your app run faster and try uh, and use feedback as well. So here what I have as an example is on the left you have an app that takes 1.5 seconds to load and on the right one that takes 3 seconds to load, but the one on the left doesn't use any kind of feedback and the one on the right does use waiter. Um, now it's up to you, but I'd argue that the one on the right, even though it takes longer to load, um, provides overall a better experience. Uh, on the one on the left, I'm, I'm, I'm left waiting, I don't know what for exactly on, on, on the first load. Um, so how does it work? Well, it's on CRAN and my GitHub, of course. Um, it's relatively easy. You just insert use waiter in your UI anywhere. Um, that import the dependencies that I need. Uh, and then you use its uh, R6 class, the waiter object to create a waiter. And then you can just call show whenever you want to show it. Uh, in this case, um, I 
pass it an ID, the ID of a chart, which is this chart here. And that, uh, that means that I don't have to explicitly hide the waiter. It'll do it automatically when it detects that that plot has re-rendered. Um, but I'll show you briefly um, from the website. Oh, we still have, still have a few minutes. Yeah, I'm quite quick. Um, so here's the gist of it. Uh, That's how it would sort of look. Um, I'll share this link later on. So you have, it shows a, a spinner at random. There's over a hundred of them that you can choose from. Uh, so you can have it over specific elements of your app. They don't have to be plots or tables or anything. They can be whatever div you want or uh, on the full screen like so. Then there is also what a specific type of loading uh, bars like this one, which you can again, very customizable. You can show it on the whole page like this if you want, or <clears throat> just on specific elements. Like here, I'm gonna load on all the plots. You can customize the color and whatever, or even layer it on this button if you want, for instance. Um, finally, there's also um, notifications here down the bottom right. Um, so you can you can customize that in pretty much any way, shape, or form that you want. <clears throat> this this host is too. That's really if you want to go quite far in customizing everything. Uh, personally, I rarely use it. I don't think it's um, necessary. Uh, but if you want a highly customized loading bar, please feel free to use that. Um, and I think that's about it. That way we have plenty of time for questions if there are any. So here is the documentation, the demo I just showed you. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. Do I have to hand over something to you, uh, Xavier? I think, Xavier, we can't hear you. Yeah. He might be muted. Do I have to mute myself so that he can? Do yes, there are questions. Do you want to? I've been disconnected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Xavier has been disconnected and I will just take over quickly here. Okay. Um, so good thing that we are six organizers <laughs> because if everyone gets disconnected, webinar well, is over. It pays the part, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is uh, one question by Daniel. How long do you know how long it still remains to display a graph? Like how do you compute? This. Ah, uh, good question. Well, truth is you don't. So there's a, there's a simple, there's one that you can put some sort of infinite, um, infinite loading bar, or you know yourself in your computation, whether you're doing a for loop or whatever, and then you can uh, do the progress bar. That's why generally people just use a spinner that's by default infinite. Okay. Um, let me see. And um, there is a, yeah, that's, yeah, so Alban, I yeah, let's uh, go over to the to the Q&A. So there is Garrick who is asking, the R6 class looks like a great interface. Can you give any quick tips for using R6 in Shiny? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Thank you, Garrick. Um, I'm afraid I have a disappointing answer for, with, for you. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert myself, um, but I think it touches on um, Something that uh, Kirill said early on, earlier this year, um, R being a functional programming language, objects are uh, immutable. Yes, and I needed something that was mutable there. Where in, this, in essence, I know Garrick knows a lot of JavaScript, probably more than I do. Uh, so it's, in a sense, I have, um, I have an ID that, that reference a, each and every waiter on the screen, and I wanted to, to internally store that without asking the user to pass that repeatedly in multiple functions every time it wants to show or hide a specific spinner that's sort of held within the R6 class. That's about it. I think, Sina, you're muted too. Um, Xavier is taking over now. Look. <laughs> I've just transformed myself into Sina. Ooh. You've changed, Sina. <laughs> All right, sorry for, for that little glitch, but thanks a lot for the presentation, John. No, not at all, uh, not at all. We will be actually seeing uh, John a little more later today. Hopefully, yeah.